just like uh, average velocity was the rate of change of position, so too is average velocity, or excuse me, average acceleration, the rate of change of velocity. So whatever your velocity is at some time point, uh, and what it was initially, take the difference of those two velocities and divide it by the amount of time that uh, took place between the first velocity and the second <coughs> velocity. That is our average acceleration over that time interval. And again, just like we did with velocity, if you let that time interval shrink to zero, in other words, take the derivative. Uh, acceleration is the derivative of velocity with respect to time. And since velocity was the derivative of position, we can say that acceleration is the second derivative of the position as a function of time graph. Referring back to the graphs that we saw in sample problem 2-2 in section 2-5 of the book, uh, we can see here that the slope of the velocity time graph is the acceleration. So here my change in velocity was 4 from 0 to 4, and my time it took was from 1 to 3, 2 seconds. So change in velocity 4 divided by change in time 2 gives me an acceleration of positive 2. And there is my value of positive 2 on the graph. Over here, the deceleration goes from 4 to 0, but now it only does it in one second. So the acceleration is twice the magnitude of this acceleration, but it's negative, of course. So we have negative 4 for our acceleration over here. Negative acceleration is oftentimes called deceleration uh, when the object is slowing down. So here is the equation. Acceleration is the derivative of velocity with respect to time. You have to make sure your velocity graph is plotted as a function of time if you want to take the derivative of it to get acceleration. Let's talk a little bit about the units of acceleration. So we know that acceleration is equal to change in velocity over change in time. So if we look at the units of velocity, that's meters per second, and the units of time is seconds. So just like you would simplify a fraction in math class, this would become meters per second squared. Okay, so that is one unit of acceleration. When we talk about freely falling objects, uh, the acceleration due to gravity is 9.8 meters per second squared. That means for every second that goes by, the velocity changes by 9.8 meters per second. Okay, but there's another unit we can also use. Uh, let's look at Newton's second law. F is equal to mass times acceleration. This is units of Newtons. Force is units of Newtons, mass is kilograms times meters per second squared. Okay? If I rearrange this equation to say A is equal to F over M, then I have the units of force, Newtons, per kilogram. And I see here that a Newton is equal to a kilogram meter per second squared. So I can uh, replace this with kilogram meter per second squared over kilograms. Those cross off. And I see that a meter per second squared is the same as a Newton per kilogram. So we have two possible uh, units for acceleration. Meters per second squared or newtons per kilogram. So this is more convenient when we're talking about acceleration due to gravity. Something accelerates at 9.8 meters per second squared, like I said. For every second that goes by, the velocity changes by 9.8 meters per second. But it's also this one uh, can also be useful when we talk about uh, an object sitting on a table. What is its weight? Weight is equal to mass times gravity. If I use here newtons per kilogram, then I would have mass in newtons, excuse me, mass in kilograms times 
newtons per kilogram and you see that gives me a weight in newtons so when we talk about objects just sitting on the table feeling the force of gravity what is their weight this is a more useful uh, unit to use let's talk about the sign of acceleration plus or minus it's conventional to say up is the positive direction so of course then down would be the negative direction gravity always acts down of course so that's why we often say gravity is negative 9.8 meters per second squared because it's in the negative direction F equals MA force and acceleration are vectors they have magnitude and direction and since they're equal by uh, a factor of a scalar the direction of acceleration is always in the same direction as the net force that causes it. So if an object is freely falling through the air, uh, in this example, there's only one force. The net force acting on the object is gravity, and that is the weight of the object. Let's look at uh, an example of just throwing an object up into the air. On the way up, the velocity is upwards. So it is positive, but gravity is always down. So the acceleration due to gravity is negative. And while uh, the object is rising in the air, it's slowing down. It reaches the top, and then it starts to come back down. So now on the way down, The velocity is in the negative direction, and the acceleration is still in the negative direction. The whole time the object's in the air, the acceleration is down, the same direction as the force. And as something falls from a higher height, we know it speeds up. Okay? so. Here we see that when velocity and acceleration have opposite signs, the object is slowing down. And when velocity and acceleration have the same sign, the object is speeding up. Let's look at another example. How about a car? Right? He's driving down the road. He has velocity we'll say to the right is positive and to the left is negative. So the car has positive velocity. When he puts on the brakes, the brakes exert a force in the backward direction to slow the car down, and so my acceleration is in the negative direction, and oh, we have opposite signs, so that means the car is slowing down. He stops at a stop sign, a, get, a, a traffic light, whatever. Then he accelerates with the accelerator, pushes on the gas pedal. He starts to move forward, so he has positive velocity, and he's accelerating forward. So both velocity and the acceleration are positive. They are the same sign, so he's speeding up. So bottom line. Opposite signs on velocity and acceleration, the object is slowing down. Same sign, whether it's two pluses or two minuses, if it's the same, the object is speeding up. Here are pictures of Colonel J.P. Stapp from the Air Force undergoing uh, tremendous accelerations. And while these pictures are interesting, uh, they're not as good as the video. So right uh, underneath the link that you clicked on to watch this lesson, on LHS Physics Taylor website, there is another link to click on uh, the video to see Colonel Stapp undergoing several different uh, experiments in which he was subjected to tremendous accelerations and tremendous G-forces.